Hey, this is Van Plexico at Windy City Pulp and Paper Convention 2012, and I have a series of questions that people on the internet have sent me about my books and stories and uh, anthologies and uh, so forth, and I thought I would run through them for you here. Um, first off, Mark asks, what inspires you and what creative things are you enjoying now? Books, movies, music, etc. Well, uh, the thing that really tends to inspire me the most really is when I go to a bookstore and I just walk around the aisles and look at all the, the various um, books and uh, you know, anthologies and things and see all the creative uh, works that, that people that I respect and enjoy have done and uh, there's just so much energy, so much creative energy that just seems to just flow out of the shelves. It makes me want to jump in the car and run right home and, uh, and, and start writing. You know, I feel like I'm being slack because I don't have enough stuff you know, on the shelves. And, uh, as far as movies and music, really, I mean, uh, the same stuff as anybody else in our line of work, really. But uh, as far as music goes, is there any question? I, I, uh, when I write, um, I like to have some music going on, but it has to be instrumental. And lately, what I've really been playing a lot is Christopher Frankie's Babylon 5 music, because it's got a big, epic, military, sweeping power to it that kind of is inspiring, but it also stays in the background and doesn't um, you know, interfere with the with the writing process. so Okay, and, uh, and, and a couple of specific things that I think have been very inspiring to me lately. Reading the, uh, the Warhammer 40,000 books have really put me in a good mindset toward military science fiction and sort of dark um, action oriented stories. It's, it really is sci-fi pulp, military pulp, and that's what I'm working on right now with Lords of Fire, which will be out hopefully later this year. And also it's, it's sort of, it was inspiring for Hawk which should be out, I think, uh, summer of this year, 2012, so. Okay, uh, let's see, Leon asks, when can we expect Metal God, that would be the Sentinels number seven, and do you still aim to write 21 or 22 volumes of the Sentinels series? Well, um, I've always intended to write around 20. Um, the idea was to do um, multiple trilogies, and 20, I know, is not a multiple of three, but so 21, something like that. Um, I'm also planning on doing some sort of origins, maybe online only, Kindle ebook only books that I could then collect together. So if we, if we count that as part of the 20 or 21, then yeah, we may get up to that high. But I'm not sure there might not be more than a couple more trilogies left. We will see. It depends on the characters, if they're still alive. And if I'm still motivated to, uh, to tell the stories and people want to hear it, then I'll probably keep going for quite a while. And as far as Metal God, um, I've written a good bit of it already. It's plotted. I took a break from it to write Hawk and to write Lords of Fire, but I'll be back on Metal God this summer and hopefully this fall, which means we will still have had one Sentinels book every year since I started. So it'll stay on schedule to the best of my knowledge, and I'm really looking forward to getting it out there. Uh, Jeff asks, how do you manage a life with so much writing? <laughs> well, you could ask my wife that question, I guess. You probably, and my family. Um, it, you know, sometimes it's a challenge. I have an office down in the basement. And I do some work there. I keep my laptop computer on the kitchen table, which doesn't always go over too well when we're trying to have dinner. But uh, what it means is that I can run over to the table and, and write something or get something down quickly uh, when, it, when, it, when the idea comes to me. And I also carry my iPhone around during the day and my new system. I used to write little notes and I'd have all these little paper notes and I'd lose them or have a notebook but I'd forget to transcribe it. And what I do now, that's the simplest thing yet, is during the day I just email myself my notes in my, from my iPhone and then at the end of the day I just open my email and I copy my notes and paste them directly into whatever manuscript I'm working on that they were the notes for and that just makes it so quick and so easy and I never lose anything. So that's very helpful. In other words, what you're doing is you're maximizing what time you have. I also have an iPad with a keyboard and so when I go to lunch, uh, I have a few minutes extra, I work away on a little bit and uh, basically you just find every way that you can to maximize and get the most out of your time uh, without taking away hopefully from your family and from the other responsibilities that, that you have. And that's, it's a trick. It's not easy, but it, you can do it. And you also, by the way, have to not be into 50 other things because, like, I don't play video games. 
I don't, uh, there's a lot of things I don't do that I could do that would take up that time. So it's a matter of priorities. And if you really want to write, you can find time. You always can find time. Um, let's see. Ian asks, how much different are your first and last drafts? What changes? Um, not that different, honestly, depending on the book, because I tend to write a very complete first draft, but that's because I tend to write a very complete outline, uh, probably more than most people I know um, that write. I tend to outline and plot my books out very thoroughly so that when I actually write the first draft, the first draft is pretty solid. Um, in fact, the things that tend to change the most, really, are when I have a new idea and I want to go back and fix something. Like, if, like um, for example, in, in Lords of Fire, I had the, the recent idea to use the, the, uh, an object, a weapon, that shows up in Lucian in Lords of Fire. Well, so now I've got to go back and rewrite so that it's been in there from the beginning. Um, that kind of thing, though, just adds value to the story. It adds entertainment. It adds, you know, it, it ties things together more. So I'm happy to go back and do that. But as for actually just like fixing sentences and correcting grammar and all, I, t I tend to be pretty thorough about the first about that the first time. So not a whole lot of changes other than what my proofreader or editors will will show me. So Mike Barron, yes, the Mike Barron of Nexus fame. Asks, how do they get eight great tomatoes in that itty bitty can? <laughs> um, the world may never know. Uh, let's see. And finally, Stephen asks, which book gave you the most trouble to write, and why? Well, you know, I had I would have had two answers for that question a year ago. Um, both Hawk and a novel called Alpha Omega uh, have been in my hopper to be worked on for six, seven years now, at least. And um, last fall, I made up my mind to go ahead and finish Hawk. And so Hawk is finished. I've still got to go back and do a polish on it, so it'll be out this, this summer. And part of it's already run in two issues of Prose Presents um, that I had polished. But, um, but Hawk, I finally just... I, once, I, you know, I, once I was able to devote complete attention to Hawk, I was able to figure out what it was about it that was holding me up and overcome that and work it out and plot it out and I think it's a very strong book now and I think people will enjoy it. Now Alpha Omega, I'm not sure when we'll ever get that one out because it's a more, it's one of the few things I've ever tried to write that didn't involve superhumans some way and so it's a little different for me, it's just more straight military. Um, it's basically my version of Space 1999, uh, but with um, more military, more sort of political intrigue. Uh, it's the moon base, I it's trapped on a moon base idea, but with lots of other stuff that, I, that I've added in. And so that one, because it's, I think because it's so different from most of what I do, it's just taking me a little bit longer to work on, but maybe one of these days. Okay, so. Uh, that's the questions I brought with me this time, and we will sign off for now. And uh, this has been Windy City Pulp and Paper Con 2012, and I'll be back uh, soon with another set of questions from readers. And thank you guys so much for reading. You mean everything. I couldn't do it without you. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you following me on Facebook at Van Allen Plexico and on Twitter at Van Allen Plexico. Uh, I, I post updates there, so if you're not already keeping track of me there. You can see my books, you can see what's going on, and you can see most of my stuff at whiterocketbooks.com. Uh, there's a few from other publishers, but most of it at, at plexico.net or whiterocketbooks.com. Um, I think that we've covered everything, and I appreciate Wayne Rangel for being my uh, cameraman, and uh, we'll see you.